The Maragdas is a work by Pedro Alcantara Monteclaro titled, in English translation, History of Panay from the First Inhabitants and the Bornean Immigrants, from which they descended, to the arrival of the Spaniards. The work is in mixed Hiligaynon and Kinaraya languages in Iloilo in 1907. It is an original work based on written and oral sources available to the author. The Maragdas is an original work by the author, which purports to be based on written and oral sources of which no copy has survived. The author makes no claim that the work contains a transcription of particular pre-Hispanic documents. The work consists of a publisher's introduction by Salvador Laguda, a foreword by the author, six chapters, and an epilogue. The first chapter describes the former customs, clothes, dialect, heredity, organization, etc. of the Aetis of Panay, with special mention of Maracudo, son of old chief Palpalan. The second chapter begins a narrative of the ten Datus' flight from Borneo and the tyranny of Raja Makadana there, and their purchase of the island of Panay from Maracudo. The third chapter tells of the romance of Sumaquil, Kapanangan and her lover Garung Garung. The fourth chapter concludes the tale of the ten Datus, telling about their political arrangements and their circumnavigation of the island. The fifth chapter describes language, commerce, clothing, customs, marriages, funerals, mourning habits, cockfighting, timekeeping techniques, calendars, and personal characteristics. The sixth and final chapter gives a list of Spanish officials between 1637 and 1808. The epilogue contains a few 18th century dates. A Borneon leader was oppressing the ten datus. In 1212 the Visayas received the Sabahan ten datus. Used by historians Philippine historians made little use of the Maragdas before the Japanese occupation, with references such as that by José Sancuya in his 1917 Historia Pre-Hispanica de Filipinas having been restricted to the Spanish-speaking elite. In a book published in 1984, the historian William Henry Scott wrote in reference to an interesting research related to Maragdas. Scott said that in 1947, a book co-authored by historian H. Otley Bayer, founder of the Anthropology Department of the University of the Philippines, refers to Margitas in the ancient writing in which it was originally inscribed. Scott quoted Bayer stating, a remarkable document known as Margitas, dating probably from about 1225, was preserved in Panay and transliterated into Romanized Visayan in early Spanish days. The myth that the Maragdas was not an original work but rather a transcription of earlier works was later given wider circulation by various academics, as detailed by Philippine historian William Henry Scott. Scott concludes that the Maragdas was an original work by Pedro Alcantara Monteclaro. Other Philippine historians, however, have other opinions. Their research led to an interesting theory that some of the data in the Maragdas is verifiable in other sources. In the year 2000, the Filipino anthropologist F. Landa Jocano, on his part, wrote a quite different account about the findings of H. Otley Bayer. Jocano maintains that the manuscript that Bayer was referring to as a remarkable document was in fact the Maragdas, not the Margitas. According to Bayer, the original text of the Maragdas was written in Old Syllabary, although the document was preserved in Romanized Visayan in early Spanish days. Bayer claimed that the Maragdas written in original syllabary was brought to Spain in the early 19th century by a Spanish colonel, but it can no longer be traced. On the other hand, the American anthropologist seemed also sure in his description of the text, and he described it as follows. Another feature of the Panay manuscript, now called Maragdas, is the ancient writing in which it was originally inscribed. The Bornean Visayans used a form of syllabic writing, which they introduced wherever they spread. In this syllabary, the vowels were written only when they stood alone or at the beginning of words. Each consonant sign stood for the consonant followed by the sound of A. The characters were incised on bamboo or written on bark with cuttlefish ink. One could also argue from what the early Spanish explorer Miguel de Lorca wrote in his report, Relacion de las Islas Filipinas, in June 1582. Writing in Arevalo, Panay, he says. Since these natives are not acquainted with the art of writing, they preserve their ancient lore through songs, which they sing in a very pleasing manner commonly while plying their oars, as they are island dwellers. Also, during their revelries, the singers who have good voices recite the exploits of olden times. 
In 1582, Lorca was not cognizant of any writing system used by the natives of Panay. Yet, at the later part of the Spanish colonization, it was discovered that various forms of ancient Filipino writing system were existing, including those used in the Visayas. The archives of the University of Santo Tomas in Manila, which contains the biggest collection of ancient documents in this writing system guarantees the proof of this. Scott himself had no doubt regarding the historicity of an event that led to the transmission of an oral tradition that came to be known as the Maragdas. He said in the revised version of his doctoral dissertation, published in 1984, There is no reason to doubt that this legend preserves the memory of an actual event, but it is not possible to date the event itself or to decide which of its details are historic facts and which are the embellishment of generation of oral transmission. Yet, even if the Maragdas is taken as a folk history, the amount of annotations and errors in transliterating and or transcribing, as well as the challenges in separating facts from literary conventions require studies. Still, theories and procedures in extracting vestiges of history from folklore would save important parts of the cultural heritage of a nation. Studies of contemporary anthropologists with actual experience of the Sulat of Panay show that what is pivotal for the construction of the identity of Panay's Budkadnon tribes are their epics. The anthropologist Patricia P. Magos, for example, says that the identity of the Panay Bukidnon culture can be reconstructed through these epics which serve as their link to the ancient past. Used by artists Despite the controversy on the Maragdas, it has definitely enriched the art scene. Based on it, Ricardo Demetillo wrote, Barter in Panay, which won the UP Golden Jubilee Award for Poetry in 1958. He would later extract from it the verse tragedy, The Heart of Emptiness is Black, which won the Palenka Award in 1973, and produced by the UP Repertory Company and directed by noted stage director Ben Cervantes in June 1974. Jeremiah's Elizaldi Navarro, J. Elizaldi Navarro, who is from San Jose, Antique, immortalized a scene from Maragdas with two versions of the mural. Bulawan na Sadik, one of which could be viewed at the lobby of the Antique Provincial Capital, and the other in the collection of an insurance company. Demetillo's play was later adapted by playwright Orlando Nadres as Kapanangan, a drama musical presented at the Manila Metropolitan Theater in 1981. It was directed by Cervantes, with music by Ryan Kayavyab, and starred Kula Desma as Kapanangan, Robert Arevalo as Datu Sumakol, and Haji Alejandro as Garang Garang. Almost all the major writers in Panay, including Magdalena Gelandoni, Ramon Muzones, and Conrado Narada have written adaptations of the legend in the novel form. From the Maragdas, Alex C. De Los Santos wrote the one-act play, Pagtimalis ni Kapanangan, Kapaningan. S. Revenge, based on the chapter on Kapanangan's adulterous relationship. Delos Santos, however, rethinks the story and views it from Kapanangan's point of view, suggesting that the act was deliberate on Kapanangan's part because she felt that Sumakwa was so engrossed with his obligations as chieftain, forgetting Kapanangan and their marriage. The play was presented in 2002 at St. Anthony's College, and as part of the trilogy. Trace Mujeres. Presented at Iloilo National High School as part of the Dueg Titrocon Regional Theater Festival. In dance, Ballet Philippines produced. Kapanangan. Choreographed by national artist Lucretia Casillag and Eddie Elleher at the Cultural Center of the Philippines. U.S.-based dancer, choreographer Dulce Cappadocia also used the Kapanangan strand of the Maragdas in her multimedia dance epic. My Lost which premiered at the Luckman Fine Arts Complex in 1999. Notes References Scott, William Henry, 1984, Pre-Hispanic Source Materials for the Study of Philippine History, New Day Publishers, ISBN 971-10-02264. Further reading Bayer, Henry Otley, 1949, Outline Review of Philippine Archaeology by Islands and Provinces, Bureau of Printing, 1949.
The Maragda's Legend, Sarazari, MTS.net, archived from the original on 27 February 2014. Maragtas Epic Story, Scribd.com External links Legend of the Ten Bornean Datus <laughs>